Uh, I'm going to call to order the May 10th Conway Select Board meeting. We're meeting by Zoom. Uh, the meeting's being recorded, and it will uh, be up in the next day or two on our FCAT video on demand channel, which people can watch by going to YouTube and then search for FCAT Media, all one word, and you will see all of uh, the four towns worth of uh, uh, programming, and the most recent is usually first, and you'll find our meeting, along with more than you possibly want to know. FCAT Sports are up there, too, and a lot of people, we're doing a lot of good sports recording right now. So, our first item on our agenda is to approve the minutes of two weeks ago's meeting and then, because now we're meeting every two weeks, and then we did have a meeting last week, um, a special meeting. So let's look at the uh, April 26th meeting first. Are there any any questions? I just, no, there um, just for the, just the, the last names we're missing for a couple of the people who were, um, who were on the call. Diane okay. and Olive. And that we, was we, didn't, we didn't have those names. Okay. Uh, they might be on the call today uh, they, if they come back or, but, uh, but, but we didn't really end up doing much last week. At least I assume you mean having to do with the poll hearing. Yeah. So, so, uh, so hopefully we can take care of that today. Um, any, any other issues with last two, uh, two weeks ago's meeting? So I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes of April 26th. A second. Yeah. I yes. Phil's I, Eric is I, I'm an I. So great. And, and then we had a, a meeting a, a week ago, uh, May, May 3rd, to review, to negotiate and then review uh, the contract with Veronique, uh, who's our, to be our new permanent town administrator. So did you take a look at those? Say okay? Mm -hmm. That looked good. Yeah. Yes. So I'll make a motion that we approve uh, the minutes of May 3rd. Yes. Yep. Second. I, I hear second. Yeah, thanks. And so I, Phil's I, and Eric is I, and I'm an I. Great. Um, so we have three warrants this week. Uh, we have a vendor warrant for 126221 and 36 cents. We have a payroll warrant for 115209 and 2 cents. And a payroll deduction warrant for 28726 and eight cents. So they all good? They looked good yeah. to me. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So I'll make Thank a motion you. we approve all three of those warrants. Second. Good. Second. Third. Yeah. Yes. I hear a, 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 a nod from Phil and a vigorous nod from Erica. And I'm a yes. So we have unanimous on that. Uh, how about uh, so minutes attended by select board meetings and over the last two weeks? Uh, so Erica, you usually go first. So the last one was our contract negotiation with our new town administrator, Veronique, and it was a successful negotiation because she's agreed to take the job. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> we'll have more to talk about that later, but that's correct. Uh, how about you, Phil? Yeah, so I was also part of the negotiation and uh, also had a Frontier School Committee meet meeting in there as well, but, which uh, nothing significant to report compared wow. to the earth-shattering news going on in the town of Conway. <laughs> That's a, <laughs> unusual in itself. Okay, well, I had the same uh, negotiating meeting, and that was great, and we'll talk more about that. And then, I, as I said I would, I went in and met with Kimberly last Friday and signed the, uh, the grant proposal that she then submitted online. It's the first time she ever submitted a grant proposal online, and uh, she got back a pretty quick... Uh, uh, you know, uh, acceptance of it, and I've gotten an acceptance back of it too. So I think that's submitted. And this is our grant for all of the uh, uh, climate remediation work we're doing. The, and uh, let's hope that that all goes smoothly. So are there any public comments? I, who's, I see some public here, but I suspect they're all here to talk about something else. So no public comments. So we uh, so for old business, we wanted to continue the poll hearing that we started 
um, two <clears throat> weeks ago, and uh, the people who uh, the people the, their neighbors that came were not happy that the Eversource didn't send anybody to answer any of their questions, and so we we postponed it until today. So we do have uh, Michael Getches here uh, representing Eversource, and uh, and. I'll open this hearing for uh, people to, you know, ask their questions and uh, uh, hopefully get get the answers that you wanted last uh, two weeks ago. So, Jerry, you want to go first? Great. Um, I just uh, want to say thanks to Ross for sending along the information um, in the email, and it feels like Michael outlined all the details in the in the document that he um, uh, sent along about questions about what is it and what's going to be on it, all that kind of stuff. So um, you know, all that stuff looks good. That answers my questions. I would just like Michael to just sort of you know state that here at the public meeting on the record as to what he you know is is saying is going to happen there, and and then I feel good. Okay, uh, Eversource is uh, proposing to install a, a pole along the existing uh, pole line, and it'll be used to uh, host a, a transformer. Uh, where the solar field has an interconnection site and the existing pole, we have to move the transformer off of that somewhere else, and it needs to be relatively close to the existing site. So that's where we place the second pole. Last week, people had a lot of questions about what the pole would look like, whether it would have lights on the top of it, whether it would make noise, uh, you, you know, uh, uh, concerned about how it's going to, you know, if it's going to have any impact on them. No, it shouldn't. It, it'll just be uh, a transformer, just like the one that's on the pole that's there now. Just move that off to the, you know, to the new pole. The pole top will be oh, pretty much the same. The cross arm construction. So not an additional transformer, just moving trans the transformer from one pole to another. Yeah, it'll be a, a bigger rating, but it's essentially just the one transformer moving mm -hmm. to the next pole. Hi, Devlin. Sure. Uh, you're muted, Devlin. I, yep. Okay. I don't want my kids and everything else to be heard, but they're going to be heard maybe. Uh, I was just wondering when it's connected and live, is it going to make any noise? I know that we were told that the, the array wouldn't make any noise, but we can hear the generators heating the batteries for this array. Is Are these going to be quiet? Because I know that sometimes transformers can make a hum. Just wanted to confirm that. that they should. Quiet. I think they only do that if something's going bad, but. Devlin, our hope is that this is going to allow us to turn the generators off. So it should be a lot quieter. Thank you. Yeah, Let's hope that would be really good. Yeah. Hi, Jerry. Um, Michael, um, you just mentioned that the transformer was going to be a different rating or a different um, something. Yeah, it's uh, the current one is uh, it's rated for 10 kilovolt amps, 10 kVA, and we have to bump it up to 25. Okay, so the, the statement that was um, provided said it was just moving the transformer from the old pole to the new pole, but so now it's sounding like it's a different transformer. Yeah, they, they don't uh, support the smaller ones anymore. Okay, so. I just want to, I just want to be clear about what is happening and I don't want to have a misunderstanding about what's going on cool and there's are there's no leds or anything on those transformers that are gonna create uh you know have light emitting from them 24 hours a day or anything like that that we are gonna see on an ongoing basis no okay i'm the closest person to the pole including the you know the property owners where it's going to be you know where it's being installed for the next amp project so that's why okay I I yeah this pole will actually be further away from the existing one from you so yeah, yeah. i'm still the closest to yep. it than anybody else so that's why i'm you know that's my concern 
Okay. Great. And then I was just wondering if when, um, if this meaning that the generator can be turned off is just electric for that, or if the whole solar array is going online. I can't really speak to what's going on for the solar field. I'm just, uh, I, my interaction is just for the interconnection from the existing Eversource yeah. equipment to the solar field. As I understand it, the, the, the array will go online and it will be producing its own power and that'll allow them to turn the generator off. But they can't turn the array online until they can connect it down to the three phase power on the street. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So and that involves that involves the transformer and the new pole. So uh, yeah. it, it's all going to happen soon, and I can't tell you exactly how soon. So maybe to just tag on to Gianna's question to clarify it, and it might be that Mary um, McClintock might have the answer to this, but the turning on of the array is pursuant to Nexamp fulfilling all of their you know promises or whatever obligations, and this interconnection getting hooked up is just a step towards that. It's not the actual commissioning of the um, facility, right? That's correct. I think Mary could answer that. Probably not the select board. Maybe, maybe, maybe Mary's not answer, on, but... on screen. OK, yeah. cool. Thank you. Hang on. Um, I'm being asked something about the poll. I'm I'm here to talk about um, mosquito control later on. I, I have not been involved. Jerry and um, and Devlin probably know more about what the, and Bob more the current you know the folks from the planning board who are more involved with the next amp project are not here. I I have not been involved, so okay. I don't have any information about about next Very good. project. Sorry. Sorry. Sorry, Mary. It's okay. It's okay. I just, yeah, I'm here for a later part and have myself turned off because I'm just, I didn't, because I don't know when it's going to be. I'm just here sort of hanging out. There is more work to do. I, you know, they're in the process of installing slats and still talking about planting. And, you know, there's, there's ongoing work that's going to keep happening regardless of turning on the array and having it generate its own power. And, and then they can turn the, the generator off. Okay. okay. But, Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Uh, any other issues? So I'm, I'm going to propose that the select board sign the poll contract that Eversource requires us to sign. Uh, <laughs> and th at least this will move this forward one more step. So I'll make that motion. Yeah, I mean, I, it sounds like the abutters don't have any objection to this particular next step in the project. So I'm happy to second that motion. So all in favor? Uh, Phil is saying aye. Eric yeah. is saying aye. aye. Yeah. Yes. I'll say aye. So good. So uh, so th this, this form will be on the table, ready to sign, I assume, tomorrow morning. Thank you very much. Is that right, Ross? Yes, it's on the desk now. <laughs> I figured. Okay, we can rush down there tonight. Thanks very much. Thank, thank you very much, Michael. Oh, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, everybody. So I'll close this hearing. Thank you. And uh, so we will go on to some new business. And the, the so I I see Mary here. I'm wondering if we should handle them out of order, but I think there may be more people coming about the mosquito control issue. So let's hold that off a little bit. And uh, the first issue on our new business on the agenda has to do with whether or not we, the select board, want to uh, at least take the next step, which for us means having a meeting you know, with the Department of Public Health to talk about PFAS testing and the, the state's proposal for PFAS testing here in Conway. Uh, uh, there's, I, I assume everybody read the documents that we were sent. Uh, and PFAS is a very common chemical that most of us aren't responsible for, but it is leaching into our drinking water like other 
chemicals and trying to get a handle on how bad this problem is. Um, it is cancer causing and uh, there, so, so, you know, the, the state is at least offering to meet with us to talk to us about what the testing will involve and whether or not they can send a document to Conway residents asking for permission to test the water in their well. Mm -hmm. And people can decline that if they want, or they can agree to, you know, allow the state to test their wells. That'll be up to them. Um, yeah, I think, I think you, it, it wasn't the Department of Health that you said, like you said, I think it's the DEP. Okay, yeah, yeah. Just sure, thank you. Um, so, yeah, uh, let's 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 meet with them. Yeah, uh, so, is that Harmon meeting? So they've offered. I think it's on the week of May sixteenth, which is, you know, coming up in about a week now, and uh, and I and this this uh, we have to agree to this. I think the testing has to occur by about the middle of June or so. So it's all going to happen yeah. fairly quickly once once we agree, and they they are then going to contact. The residents in Conway. They they say they've tried to find residents who live near possible sites of contamination. Uh, you know, we all we all got a notice. I don't know whether your house got selected. Um, my house didn't get selected, and I have mixed feelings about that. But I but I'd be happy to have my my water tested anyway, <laughs> even if I didn't. Yeah. Yeah. They don't get a notification. So that's one of my questions for them. <laughs> Great. Okay. So I'm going to make, I'm going to, I'm going to make a, a, a proposal that we, that a motion that we, that we agree to meet with the state and Ross, are you going to figure out a date? I mean, they, I think they may have proposed the date of May 21st. I can't remember, but, uh, um, we anticipate noti they anticipate notifying people. Well, yes, they suggested lunchtime meeting on noon Friday the twenty first. Um, so yeah, yeah, so, I can block that out. That feels good to me too. Okay, so 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 um, I'll make the motion that we we meet with the state uh, for a lunchtime Zoom meeting. I wonder if we're allowed to eat then during that uh, on May twenty first. And, and Russell will confirm that with them. Can I get okay. a second? Yeah. You don't, you don't need a motion for that. Well, okay, <laughs> good. Well, as long as we're gonna do it. Yeah. Uh, well, what, what you're saying though, is the town is interested in participating and you'll go to the next step and have a meeting. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Um, Phil had asked a question about who gets these reports. They said they will notify the property owner, the Conway Board of Health, and DEP. And Phil had asked who pays for it, you know, any remedial activities. And what they said is in most cases, the contamination is coming from off site, from another business. And anyway, the source of the problem is the one that usually pays for the re remediation. So that's no guarantee that someone else will pick up the tab, but it sounds like that if everybody's just running a household, normal residential activity in their site. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, the problem is our well water comes from our neighbor's well water. I mean, you know, it just comes from Conway. In general, they talk about testing public water sources, and we don't have a public water source. We have we have 800 public water sources, so. Okay, so we'll meet with them on the 21st and we'll see where we go from there. Uh, yeah, the, 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 thing, the thing that I just would like to know is whether the, the grammar school has been tested for that because they're on a whole separate thing. Um, but that's the one actual public water authority in the that, that we have that 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 requires the monthly testing and all that other stuff but um because that's also our emergency management shelter and uh that's the one that's that's our public water source that's because you use that term but that's an actual 
term with meaning and that the grammar school is our one public water uh, whatever um so that's that's all this yep you're right but, <laughs> because it's we, a well just like all of the other wells right down, but then it's, it's a special well yeah if there's a single one that we want tested most of all i would think it'd be that one but yeah not that everybody else is expendable but you know it's that one <laughs> i i also want to point out that um I think is PFAS used in firefighting foam. Exactly. That one of the sources. And so to the extent to which there is a highway department facility next to the public water supply well, um, actually getting pre-tested, you know, it's like the, you know, that's not that they're gonna necessarily have the fire stuff there. But if there's equipment that's been exposed to firefighting equipment or whatever. And then it's getting washed off there, you know. You know, I don't know. It just seems like it's it's more at risk because that supply is is next to all that town facility. So that's I would yes, regardless of whether the state does it or not, we should be testing that public water supply regularly for PFAS. Yeah, yeah and, and it does. They have a consultant that's part that, that's they're required to have and it gets tested um, just like any other water authority would be testing um, already. So I just, that's just the one thing that I'm not sure to what extent I would have to make some phone calls to figure, to find out. Right. What, right. What, what, yeah. With PFAS on the list of stuff they test for. Right. I, I would imagine so, but I, I, it, I, I'm just making, you know, I don't know for sure. So I shouldn't answer that question. So, well, that's um, why it'll be good to have this meeting <laughs> so we can get yeah. all these questions. Yeah. Out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So our next item on the agenda is signing Veronique's contract. Uh, does anybody have any more issues? Uh, have... Veronique, do you want to talk about your meetings about that you had with with uh, Jan and with your insurance carrier? She doesn't have to do that. That's no, 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 no. Sorry, 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 Bob. No, 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 no. I can tell you that everything's good. Yeah, that, that, okay. yeah, yeah, that was yeah, yeah. what I—that was what you said, right. and so right. I enjoy hearing that again. Yeah, so. Awesome. All right, all right. Sorry, Bob, but that. No, just... no, it's good. All right, all right. But well, we okay. Anyway, good. So it's ready for us to sign, Ross. If we come down tomorrow. It is. And Great. do we? Wait, do we? Are you going to make a motion to sign the contract? Yes. Yeah, oh. So I'm going to. If, if if nobody has any more issues, I will. Make a motion that we sign Veronique's contract, uh, a three-year contract. I second the motion. Yeah, I see Phil vigorously I, nodding, and I, vote I will yes. say I also. I vote yes. Good, he votes yes, yes. So we have we we, we are unanimous. Thank you very much, Veronique. Uh, a, a lot of people have ex told me they're thrilled with this. So. Well, thank you. And I am beyond thrilled myself. And I just wanted to thank the board for your confidence in me. And I can't wait to get started. So, thank you. And, I, you know, the fact that you're already in meeting with Ross and, and, and talking, you know, finding what all is involved here, you're in good hands. Mm -hmm. So this is great. Indeed. Yeah. Uh, the next item on our agenda is to... that, that make, no, that makes it official. That make this makes it officially official. Like, Thank you. Up, in, up until now, it was still theoretical. <laughs> now it's officially official. Okay. As soon as we sign the the paper, Phil. So yeah, we need to get in there and sign. Yeah, I'm sure Ross has it on the table already. <laughs> Okay, thank you. I'm going to hang on as long as I can, but I do have a board of health meeting. So if you see me, <laughs> that's why. Thank you. You're conflicting meetings. <laughs> so the next item on our agenda is uh, authorizing FERCOG and occasionally Ron to bid and sign contract documents. So this is pretty straightforward. As you know, FERCOG does a lot of um, regional purchasing for multiple towns. And this would just be to authorize them to go after some contracts on Conway's behalf. In some cases, the, the contracts will, will be signed by FERCOG. In other cases, they'd be signed by RON, depending on what they are. But 
as chief procurement officer, at least on the interim basis, and the Board of Selectmen, I thought it was appropriate that you authorize FERCOG to do their bidding and Ron to sign contracts when it's appropriate. Will those contracts come before the board? Um, probably not if you let them sign them on their own. You could get notified that they, they've been issued so you know what was going on. Or you could retain the ability to sign them yourselves, but um, that can sometimes slow down the bidding process and the awarding process. It, it, has this been yeah. happening all along? Yeah, we've we've been doing this every year, and this is sort yeah. of like for the, this is for like the asphalt and, and like the, the 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 that stuff like that, um, and all those other things that they use for roads and stuff. But um, and that's really all that it's been in the past. The only thing that I, that, you know, from the FERCOG, being on the FERCOG board and the, the budget stuff, I noticed that there were years that, that we got sort of itemized in a line item for procurement services. And there were years when we have not, but it seems like we've been doing this every year. So I didn't really even want to call them because I figured they might have made a mistake and they'll charge us for the years that they didn't. So, um, but uh but I, it, it, it is a mystery to me that that end that it just seemed, you know, I, I know we've used the procurement stuff special for like the town garage facility. So maybe that's when we got the itemized uh, stuff. But um, I don't know. It, it may also depend upon maybe the Conway didn't need that service that year and therefore didn't participate. But I can't comment specifically what they were in or out of. Yeah. But one of the things that we so, buy every year is, you know, the. The, the diesel fuel that we run all the trucks with, and that goes out for bid, and Ron signs that contract. And and I do know just from listening that, that, that they, they claim pretty significant savings for everybody because of the bulk size of some of these purchases when um, and some of the stuff is really bulky. So bulky stuff in bulk. There's also the savings on not having to go through the process of advertising, submitting bids yeah. in the clerical time or superintendent's time or potentially town administrator's time yeah. process. So there's a lot of savings on the inside as well. Yeah. I've, I've definitely been in similar situations where I was authorized to sign contracts, but I always would bring it before, you know, a, a board or governing body so that everyone knew. You know, I didn't have to collect like nine signatures in order to get it done. But um, so I feel comfortable with this as long as like, you know, we get the heads up, even if it's just an email or, you know, verbal, hey, we're, you know, I'm signing piece of paper on, the, on behalf of the town of, town of Conway. But otherwise, I'm very comfortable with it. I'm here in support. So I'll make a motion that we approve uh, this item of FERCOG and Ron uh, signing, uh, going out for bid and signing contracts on the town's behalf. With, yeah, as long as there's, you know, it, yeah. Notice to the board before someone. I'll, I'll, I'll mention that when I send it back. Okay. Great. Yeah. Second. So. I. Eric is I. Phil is I. I'm an I. Great. Yeah. And do you want to have all three of you sign it? Or are you okay with designating Bob or, or someone else to sign it on your behalf? It, it, is this uh, the FERCOG contract just needs one signature? It provides an option for just one or two others if required. Just one is fine, I think. I'm comfortable with that. I'll sign it tomorrow. OK. Uh, so now we're on to the issue that Mary is here for, and an issue that's gotten a lot of press lately as the end date is coming on, having to do and, with yeah, mosquito spraying. Uh, whether or not we want to, uh, as a town, attempt to opt out of having our town sprayed. Uh, there's been a lot of talk. Uh, the, according to the state, our town has no, no danger of Triple E or other mosquito-borne diseases, which makes spraying feel like it's unnecessary here in Conway. Uh, and the spraying will have an impact on all of the other insects that yeah, we I don't, have here in Conway. I, it's, I don't think it's accurate to say we have no danger of any of that. I think uh, it's accurate to say we're in the low risk zone. Um, 
but uh, <sighs> is, is this yeah. the first time that we've taken this up? Because from what no, so so this has come up in the past in the context of uh, the repeated push that we get on an almost annual basis to join the Pioneer Valley Mosquito Control Commission District. Um, and that's sort of a separate but related thing to what we're talking about right now, the opt out. Um, but so, so just so, that you, so in most years that I know of that mosquito control, I know that Carolyn Ness from the Deerfield Select Board has either been chairperson of that committee or has been uh, otherwise proselytizing and evangelizing for that committee. Um, and and um, uh, you know, and I, I Deerfield has a lot more like sort of, you know, they're they're, they're flatlanders. So they have a lot, they, they have actual mosquito issues and they have a, a higher prevalence of mosquito borne illnesses than we do. But um, uh, the, 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 what, what everybody should remember is that the last time, I think this has come up, there's two times that this came up in town meeting that I remember because to join the Mosquito Control Commission requires I forget, I think it's 5,000 um, uh, uh, or, or some, some such thing. And so it has to go on the town meeting warrant. And people stood up and said, this is a good thing. Let's pay for this. And that's the, that's, that's how you, whatever. And, and it was ugly Like the, the people lined up. I, I just remember people lining up out the door to say, you know, how awful this would be to join that and how the aerial spraying and, you know, this and that. And, people really, really got excited about it. Um, and I, in the final, I, I just remember, it's one of those things that it, by the end, the people that had stood up and said, let's do this, were all saying, no, let's not do this. Um, that it was just that kind, like there was no, it, it was like a unanimous will voice of the people. Like we're not doing aerial spraying in this town, you know, whatever. And, and so until, you know, so, so, so that's why the opt out thing sort of struck home to me, because I really feel like the town gave sort of an unmistakably clear sense that we do not want to do, um, uh, you know, aerial, be a part of any process that could lead to aerial spraying. But, does, um, but, th but that was my understanding was the state will do this aerial spraying for us unless we have. Well, but even that's a misnomer because the, the state would hire the contractor, the contractor would hire a subcontractor who hires somebody at the Orange Airport who has to measure the chem contents of the chemical properly for their little crop spaying helicopter. And it all, you know, that, that's the reality of it. And everybody along the line has checklists and this and that, and they're promising to do things the right way. So and, that seems less. Right. right. But, but the reality is, you know, the reality is that people have just said, do not do that. Do not be a part of anything that will result in aerial spraying. Um, there have I'm, been some misleading messages that went out that people could individually opt out. And so that's a separate thing than, than joining or not joining the, the Mosquito District, the Pioneer Valley. So what is going on right now, the opt out, this is the state mosquito board whatever, and I forget what the full and proper appropriate terminology is for their, for what they are, but it's this, it's an, it's the state, it's not the local mosquito commission that operates under the auspices of the state. Um, it's the state itself that is now, it's, it's a whole, it's a, like a separate thing. And if you, and, and the state is going to be responsible for mosquito, you know, is, is taking like sort of a res more responsible kind of a or paternalistic or whatever you want to call it um, outlook towards mosquito stuff for over the statewide in general. And so now they're saying they're going to they're, they're going to do all this in every town um, unless you opt out. Right. But so, what you and, but and the one individual of, opt out doesn't pertain so, to what the state does. The yeah, state is does. doing aerial spraying. No one can individually opt out of the state's individual spraying. What you can opt out of is if you're in a control district, like the Pioneer Valley Mosquito Control District, you can opt out of the individual home by home spraying that they can choose to do if they decide it's necessary. And so that you can opt out of, but we're not in the control district. 
So, so there's no individual opt out for Conway. Correct. There's a municipal wide opt out from the state and it's the SRMCB state reclamation and mosquito control board that holds the, the whole state. And that's and the one basically that, said, is that the right? one that has the deadline that like we're we're, really, we're running up against the deadline but with all the this Well, yes, it was May 15th. It. They moved it they moved the deadline to May 28th. Which is still But I've read through the application for municipal opt out and you basically have to present your alternative plan. Right. The alternative plan can be based largely around education. You know, drain all the, the water bodies out of your backyard, don't store used tires that collect water. So education is a key piece of that. But you need an opt out, you need a plan in order to be allowed to opt out. That has to and, be approved by the Board of Health. Yes, and I think we'll probably be a bit tight, even with the deadline yeah. being moved out two weeks, to get that done by the 28th of May. It may be something that the board want to wants to ask the Board of Health to work on for next year, is to come up with an alternative plan so the town could then opt out. Uh, I see a couple of hands, so Devlin. Yeah, thanks, Bob. Um, I haven't done enough research on how many mosquitoes bats eat, but I think if we can do homework on providing people or educating people on um, insectivore habitat, like creating housing for bats and birds that eat um, mosquitoes, um, bats eat a ton, I know that. Uh, I think that would be a really good alternative plan. Um, I think pest spring, any pesticide over our town is, is just a, a death wish to so many beneficial insects. I mean, we're trying to do a pollinator garden in Conway. It seems really counterproductive to be spraying pesticides any at all for our, our town. That's all. Well, so I, that was my question. Did we get sprayed last year? Was this an issue last year or did the state determine no. that we were not enough of a mosquito risk that we so, didn't get? So apparently the only time the state sprayed Conway without uh, the, as part of this, pro, as pro, a, a similar prior program was in a, a, like the West Nile scare of like 1999 to 2000, when people were actually dying from West Nile and it, but the, but the, uh, you know, the, the, it, it, it got, the, the, there was in a certain amount of hysteria surrounding of it. I, I remember being, you know, how my life was impacted by it at the time. And the different stuff that was closed down for that summer of 2000 and and all that i, I remember that very well and just it, it um but the result was that the state did like a statewide spray is what, from what i'm told yeah this but, is a new program the state is reacting to the triple e scare of last year mm -hmm. hi mary um i second what devlin said that it's really counterproductive to think about doing large-scale spraying when we're at the same time trying to promote pollinators and other beneficial insects. I also um, really wonder if um, there are templates for town-wide, uh, you know, town town plans or who, you know, we're not the only one, we're however many towns across the state are dealing with this. Uh, you know, does FERCOG have any samples of town, you know, that we could like take and you know the board of health could look at the select board could look at they could tweak a little bit and we could get it in by the 28th i mean if we have to start from scratch right now and research and whatever that could be a challenge but if there's already you know we can't be the only the first ones doing this there must be town plans of groups that have opted out a lot of towns have opted out so they all have to have plans let's get some of them and could they be a template that then you know you could talk to the Board of Health, get their input, and, you know, before the 28th, say, here's our plan. Um, Verney, could you talk about the Board of Health and this issue? Have, have they talked about it? Hi, sorry. Yeah, we're actually, it's on our agenda tonight. So that's one of the things we'll be discussing. Um, and I'm sure there are plans out there. I haven't seen any. Um, I believe Carl has. So, you know, we can certainly research it. I don't know um, about the timeline about getting it done before the 28th, but, um, you know, we can certainly be in touch after tonight's meeting and, and maybe get some samples to the board. 
to look at? Well, I mean, Greenfield, Greenfield was in the press that they had just had passed, you know, an alternative plan. Yep. But Greenfield, I think the timing Wendell. is still tight. Even with a template, you have to have a public hearing. Mm -hmm. um, I think you're going to have to go really fast. To yeah. You, you have to have a public hearing for this? That's Why? Right. Yes, the board, of, the board of Health has to have a public hearing. And so they will document all of this. So people who do want the town to be sprayed can have their voices. Right. No, I understand about public hearings, but because a... Okay, so when if the Board of Health makes a regulation, there has to be a public hearing about it. Is that? I mean, I know I know what plan I know what the planning board has to do around public hearings. I don't know about other bodies what they well, have to do. My understanding was that was that they had to have a public hearing before they make the regulation, before they decide to opt out. Before the before the board decides to opt out, they have to have a public hearing prior to that. Yeah, I, I, I definitely will be discussing this tonight and I'll let you know. I, I don't know, to be frank, because we haven't had a public hearing since I've been on the board. Um, sounds an, this sounds an awful lot like a public hearing to me. Yeah, you, you would. Yeah. I mean, I, I think I mean, if it's if it's a legal public hearing, there is not the time because it has to be has oh. to be legally noticed and all of that. So there isn't time to do it if there's a but. No. Uh, the deadline I, got pushed. The deadline got pushed back to the twenty eighth. The twenty eighth. So there, there might be, but how much time? If do you got the notice in, uh, very quickly, like yeah. tomorrow. Right. Right. So, might, because it's fourteen days and seventeen seven days for a legal notice for a public hearing, at least for the planning board, and, but I, I just you know, and I, you know, I hear, I understand that it could be hard and it could be impossible, but I think given the possibilities of a template, Franklin Regional Council of Governments is probably on this. They probably have some samples. Greenfield has opted out. Wendell has opted out. They have to have already done a plan if they've already opted out. Um, you know, so just saying. Yeah, I'm not sure that all of them have actually finished their plans. I think that they, they have to, and it has to be approved, of course. But I think the deadline is to tell the state, this is what we're doing. I don't know that you actually had to have the plan by then. I'm not positive about that. Um, but the plan. Yeah, but and, and I and I do want to say that, you know, I did look at the historical data of Conway having been sprayed and it, and it, you know, as Phil was saying, that's the case. It hasn't, you know, obviously we could definitely be impacted by this in the future. Who knows if it would be this year? You know, hopefully it will not, um, but we'll definitely be discussing it tonight and I can certainly pass on whatever we discussed tonight to the board and. and yeah, um, yeah. yeah, I would just really urge, I would really urge if there's, you know, if there's any way to be able to do the official opt out and get the plan, especially if it's like we're opting out and we'll send you the plan next week or, you know, we're going to have a plan. It's in process um, because yeah, I, I, you know, I, I seconding also what Phil said, that when this kind of thing was discussed in town meeting, there was a lot of reaction. And that was before there was even this, this level of concern about pollinators that there are now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. The, the process, according to the state, is a, is a meeting of the select board indicating their intention to opt out. The meeting needs to include input on the plan um, comments from the Board of Health and allow time for the public to comment. The, the vote should state the date and time of the public meeting, sorry, public meeting, not public hearing. Um, indicate that the Board of Health was consulted, that the public was allowed to comment. Indicate what you're opting out of, like don't spray certain areas or don't spray the whole town. You've got to provide a certified copy of the vote. You got to complete the application form. They said by May 15th, but now I believe it's May 28th. They do list here a separate process for private property to opt out. If you go to the state's web page, apparently there's a form where someone can fill that out. Um, they don't say whether that's easy to do or not. But if we're doing but, a townwide, if we're doing a townwide opt out, then the private property opt out would seem to be redundant. Yes, absolutely. I'm just saying that in case something doesn't happen this year, there may be a, a, an avenue for 
private residents to opt out. Devlin. Yeah, I was just looking at the state website and it says, um, and sorry if this was repeated, I was looking while people were talking. Um, it says, what are the minimum requirements for an alternative mosquito management plan? Um, in order for the plan to be considered, it must contain at a minimum a detailed public outreach and education component. Municipalities should also make sure to provide an appropriate level of detail for any other components of the plan they intend to provide. So it seems like just like sending out town members, like how they can minimize uh, mosquitoes from breeding in puddles and, and buckets of water, whatever things that collect water and maybe giving alternatives if people want to build bat housing, like me, I've been wanting to do it for a long time, like um, links to build houses and that's all my like insectivore habitat. The way you say that, Devlin, it doesn't sound like we have to have completed that public outreach component, only that we have it in the plan. The plan. Yeah, that's what it says. It's on the state website. It's right below. Um, yeah. yeah, what will the EEA consider when reviewing a municipality's application for an alternative mosquito management plan? Um, it'll be individually reviewed with consideration of historical arbor virus risk. Uh, the regional impact of excluding the municipality from the spring and the ability of the municipality, I can't say that word, <laughs> to successfully implement an alternative mosquito management plan. So that's all. Yeah. So it's on this, like, go ahead. Yeah. So between what you've said and what um, Ross said, it's not a public hearing. It could be a select board meeting that on the agenda said, we're going to be talking about our plan. And we're in, and we're considering opting out. Come on down, everybody! Like we're here now, and that that could, I don't know when your next, you know, what your meeting schedule is between now and the twenty eighth, but that could constitute the public meeting because you know it's a posted open meeting public thing. It's not like a like a special permit kind of public hearing that takes legal notice and stuff. So our our next meeting is May twenty fourth. Could we? decided this meeting that as a select board we want to opt out or do we have to say I, i'm just not sure like like the the order in which this has to happen do we say that we want to opt out and then invite people to comment publicly at our next meeting yes we want to start the process so we can opt out uh, properly in such a way that the state won't laugh at our request when they read it oh, okay that makes sense <laughs> So, well, that so that means mean, two weeks from now, we'll have a plan. So that means that yeah. right, that would mean that between now and the 24th, you have a draft of a plan that you're then getting input on on the 24th and then voting to tweak the plan and or adopt the plan as is. And we just have to indicate that we've had Board of Health input, which the Board of Health is meeting tonight. So we will have had the Board of Health input, presumably by the 24th. Well, and hopefully, the Board of Health can come up, come up with some details on this plan. Uh, plan yeah. Because the because the 24th, we want it to be sort of ready to go. Right. Minus, well, you know, with, 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 with a few with a few suggestions that we might get on the 24th. Yeah. Um, so but, it but, basically, but basically the 24th, it's it's ready. If we can get a template from Wendell or Greenfield and you know. Uh, uh, Priscilla Lynch is on the call today and She's not saying anything, but uh, you know, she had she had called wanting to attend this meeting in support of opting out. No. Hi, Priscilla. Yeah, no. Yes, I have actually three adults in my household who all say opt out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In fact, my adult daughter said, "What? They're going to crop dust us?" Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. No need for it. We don't need it. Right. So well, it's also. It's it also seems like there's evidence that it's not as effective in, you know, that it's, it's sort of a, you know, that a more tar, you know, like if they really needed to be spraying in particular areas that a more targeted localized approach that the, that the aerial isn't necessarily as effective, even at, you know, it's what they can do on a broad scale, but it's maybe not as targeted. But I, I mean, I, I just do want to say that, um, I mean, in a sense, we have a deadline because of May 28th, but as Phil said, we haven't actually been sprayed. I mean, the risk of us getting sprayed this year is very minimal. So if we don't meet this May 28th deadline, there's probably a really good chance that we're not going to get sprayed this year anyway. But um, but I'm 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 all for meeting that deadline if we can do that. Yeah. And then there's the, the, the select board asking the uh, Board of Health to come up with a plan or draft plan anyway ahead of the meeting on the 24th. Veronique still here. 
Well, her, Actually, the, I think that's a wonderful delegation of a uh, of, of party. <laughs> <laughs> Veronique's meeting I, starts I, in eight minutes. I, I actually, I actually think that's a fantastic way to approach this this this, this, uh, this situation. Um, and and you know, uh, the, but and and you know there, there there's still sort of the associated question as it comes up every year, it, um, which is part of this, which is we're being asked once again to join the Pioneer Valley Mosquito Control District. Um, and once again, it is an annual fee of five thousand dollars, and would require town meeting permission. Um, and and you know, when I saw that, I just want you to know, I did call the the professional director of the Pioneer Valley uh, Mosquito, uh, but whatever, and and um, who's also this works for the state, the, 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 uh, similar similarly, and. Uh, and, and, and I did t tell him that as long as, you know, as long as the step number one in this town is pay you $5,000, I, um, I, I, I think that it's going to be a long time until you see us as members. And I, you know, I, I, I suggested that, that you give a, that, that we have sort of an, a, that there, there be an alternative path to membership where, you know, maybe you provide services that we want, like, like they do the glue, the, they do the, like the little glue trap things that trap mosquitoes. And then they test them all and they put them throughout the town next to little roads and stuff, which is non-invasive and non-toxic, but you get to find out what's in your mosquitoes. Um, and that seemed to me marginally useful, um, at least. And, and, but, 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 but like I did that, but, um, uh, you know, um, so, so they said, he, he actually said he's going to put it before the board of directors of, of, of that you know, to, to see whether there's an alternative route for towns to at least participate to some extent in that organization and um, at least, you know, and just to see what it's about and see how decisions are made and see if you're satisfied that you can stop bad things from happening in your town as your town sees it, um, you know, that, it, whatever so but it seems like this is an avenue for opting out of state spraying without having to participate in the local you know in in the deerfield yeah. valley plan so right because because we need town right now as as constant we need town meeting permission to participate in right. that and the warrants closed and it's not happening and so even if it something. did happen even if it did happening at with the, you know every other day in the newspaper spraying 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 putting it in this warrant would be um, yeah yeah, not a good idea, you know. Well, if we uh, can make the, the deadline at the 28th, I think that would be, and, and, and they may even extend it beyond that, who knows? So <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, I do have to tootle um, because I'm hosting the Board of Health meeting, but so I am, when I go to this meeting, I'm gonna be telling the Board of Health that the select board would like the Board of Health to prepare a plan for opting out, is that correct? Yes. Okay. To be presented at our May 24th meeting. And, and, and we're happy to help. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Great. And, and we're very and we're very grateful for the Board of Health's kind assistance <laughs> in this regard. All right. Great. Okay. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Vernie. Thank you. Bye bye. You. Okay. Any more issue on this issue? We're we're working through our list here. Uh, so the next thing on our list has to do with the Germain scholarships. Did did you guys take a look at? The applications and the money available and um i did not because i couldn't um unless that was the last i got i think a little confused because everything was all together in one pdf which in many ways i love louise that's actually <laughs> um but so that was that was literally my first select board meeting last year and i thought we did that in executive session or there was something like we couldn't like talk about people's it was just that was literally my very first select board meeting last year, um, but I have not seen the scholarship applicants. Yeah, if if if, if you want to do if you want to talk about people's names, it, it has to be done in executive session. Right. So I think we didn't do it, but it was kind of it was hard to. So we just I think we last year we just gave everyone the same amount of money because that seemed the easiest way to do it without actually talking. Right. About but people. in years past, that has not been the way. That, so right. it is. It is something many that... years we have done it that way, it, but uh, th this year we have 10 applicants and we have about $980, $980 a piece if we divide them 
evenly among the 10 applicants. Yeah, that's, that's, that's what we did last year. Right. Now, now, yes. Now we could choose not to spend all of the nine thousand eight hundred and whatever it is dollars. That's that's about the total amount of what we made in interest on the Germain Fund this year. And generally, we only spend the interest on the fund. Last year, we only spent five thousand dollars, and uh, and we had more money than that because we were trying to build the fund back up again. We had we had about eight. Eight thousand dollars that we could spend, and we spent about five of it. So we gave everyone five hundred dollars each. So we no, so we yeah, so we gave every no, no, we didn't have ten applicants. We only had about five applicants last year. Oh, okay, that's right. But so this year we have nine thousand eight hundred and twenty dollars of interest okay, that the right. fund made, and we have ten applicants. <laughs> So I'm perfectly happy saying let's give everybody nine hundred and eighty dollars. And you know, I don't if you look at these applications, they are all pretty incredible. The, really the, hard the, to I know. <laughs> Every time I review scholarship applications, there's no yeah, way. Yeah. Um I'm fine with that. I mean, although if you know, in the interest of building the fund back up, do we just want to say like nine hundred, like round we, it We off could do that. Just to make it it's not gonna change it much. Phil's sighing. No, that's that's. <laughs> I, I I I'm quite comfortable with the balance in that fund now. I'm always of the mind to dip into the pr principal a little bit every year. i um, Phil. That, there have <laughs> been years we did that. If you look back no. over that note Jan sent us of the history of the fund, where yeah. we actually gave more money out than we made yeah. in interest, yeah. but not often. Yeah. I, um, I mean, you know, ha having two kids in college, like nine hundred dollars is. That's like textbooks for a semester. That's, yep. that's a decent yep. chunk of change. And so the alternative is to choose one kid and to give them all $9,000. And that feels, I mean, that's enough to make a, diff, a dent, <laughs> but. I, you know, I, I would only feel comfortable doing that randomly, literally like you won the lottery this year. Like I couldn't, I don't think I could do that based upon, you know, like, I know when my kids applied, they filled out a million applications and the Germain Fund was one of them. And it was on the families to find a lot of different scholarships that were available and getting 900 from each of them would have been fantastic. It, yeah. And they add up. Yeah, um, I'm always inclined to help people more rather than help people less. But if my if my colleagues disagree then i'm fine with whatever you decide with whatever but um you know i i i always when, when i think about stuff like this i think about how you know uh, towns uh, states they they pick winners and losers all the time and you offer tax breaks to move your business here or whatever and and i always thought that this should be thought of as like that pick which kid is most likely to to settle and buy a home and settle in this town after moving somewhere first or whatever, but which and and pick bet on a bet bet on someone like that and give them the whole amount and make a difference in their life so that they're gonna move back to town because we really need people to move to town. So I want to bet on I yeah I <laughs> I'm not a but, gambler. But no, I that's, bet on all the kids. Yeah, you can't. So so it's, that's not what we're gonna do. So we're just gonna give everybody nine hundred and eighty dollars or nine hundred and fifty dollars, whatever. So. That would be my proposal, but I'm yeah. certainly, you know, I'm interested in hearing what what you have to say. Yeah. Well, I'll go with your, yeah. I mean, our the ten year. I mean, we're you know. Uh, yeah, I, I'm just looking at the numbers now that I found Louise's report. I, you know, I'm I'm happy with nine. I'm happy with um, nine fifty. Um, but I think that we should give all the kids the same amount of money. So. I'm going to make a motion that we give all of the applicants $950 from I'll the Germain that. Fund. Sounds Sorry, good. Guys, what is this for? We just joined. We're open to farm in, in, on uh, Newhall Road. Sorry. Hey, well, we're talking about the annual scholarship that the select board awards from a Conway fund that was that was left, you know, for college scholarships, and we we generally look at how much interest the fund made over the last year. 
and we decide how to give it out among the kids who apply. And we had gotcha. about 10 kids apply this year to for scholar college scholarships. And we have about $9,800 in interest that the fund made this year. Wonderful. Great. Thank you for letting so, me know. So it's one of the more enjoyable things we get to do, but it's always a difficult decision. <laughs> Understandable. <laughs> So I'm going to make a motion that we give all of the applicants $950 from the Germain Fund. Yeah, I second that. So all in favor? Yes. Aye. Aye. Okay. Great. So we'll we'll do that. Uh, for Open View Farm, did you join to talk about this issue, or did you have something else? We we here for the mosquito the control. <laughs> What's that? Are you here for the mosquito spring? Yes. Correct. Yes. So, so we finished that issue about 10 minutes ago. And, uh, and so the, we have requested that the Board of Health try to complete uh, an, an educational plan and the, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the Conway plan for how the alternative plan for dealing with mosquitoes. And the board was very strongly in support of opting out. And, and we're going to meet again in two weeks. So at two weeks from now, select board meeting, We'll hopefully have a plan from the Board of Health and we'll approve it and fill out the application. Excellent. But it'll be a town wide opt out of the aerial spraying at least so that um, so that such so, so that entities such as Open View Farm would not have to do opt outs on their own. Great, cool. Yeah, we filled out uh, an individual opt out as well. Um, so yeah, hopefully double the uh, protection. <laughs> So are you in Conway? Correct, yes. Are you open? Where in Conway? <laughs> uh, I mean, the name is Open View Farm. Yes, we're sort of open in a way. Um, <laughs> we are at the end of Newhall Road. So just okay. off Hall Road next to uh, uh, Natural Roots. Oh, awesome. Cool. Yeah. And um, yeah, we're a farm of maybe like an acre and a half. Me and Zach uh, are manning the the fields you know <laughs> and uh yeah gonna have some food growing here uh to distribute to our community and uh yeah hope that um there is as little pesticide spraying as possible we are right next to a right of way so they i think do spray uh on that a little bit which you know, we can't really do much about other than like you know have uh our prayers with uh, the water that it, it flushes down the, the the hillside um but you know it's uh, uh, an open water source too, where there's, there's a stream just down the hill too. So like, you know, we're really hoping that we can not have pesticides here more than- What's our... your relationship with uh, uh, with Natural Roots? Um, I uh, had a share there for a while, you know, because uh, <laughs> they're really delicious. Um, be competitors. Neighbors would be- That's the, okay. But yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> more appropriate, yeah. Great. Um, they're great people, though. I do, I do know uh, that their uh, horse-powered farm is uh, a, a wonderful addition to the farming community. As a farmer myself, uh, I really appreciate that aspect of their uh, cultivation. So, yeah. So, are you next to that other little building that's for sale with three acres? That was like it looks like a little shop. Um, it's like right on Shelburne Falls Road. I'm not sure. I don't. I don't think there's anywhere for sale. No, no, no. Very end of New Hall Road. We're he's New he's Hall. on New oh, Hall Road. Okay, okay. Yeah, you're like you're on New Hall Road. Okay, all right. Yeah, never mind. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Did you yeah. buy that massive house at the end of New Hall Road? No, it I'm sorry. Me. Never mind. <laughs> no, this is this is this is on camera for the public. Yeah. It's like you know. So great. Um, How we meet the neighbor? Yeah, I, like, um, oh, yeah. no. I mean, <laughs> you know, I'm in. I'm curious too. I would ask even more personal questions, but I request, you know, uh, you know, just. That it, it is on camera and it is it is taped somewhere for like all eternity. So yeah. Sorry to hear. That uh, means ownership. Uh, it's owned by my stepmother. We are here. It was on the market. It was taken off during the pandemic. Uh, so we're here to sort of revive it a little bit. And so we're in our kind of pilot here to see. We'll hope to see you in two weeks. We'll have another, we'll be going over this issue in two weeks. Yes, yeah, awesome you. to have more people farming in Conway too. That's really exciting. Yeah.
Is there going to be a link on the uh, town calendar, I assume? Uh, yeah, you're asking a lot. You're asking a lot. No, no, yeah, there should be a, a link, a select board link on the town calendar. Excellent. For the select board meeting. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Feel free to join any of our committees that you want to in town. Yeah, the <laughs> agriculture committee. Like, like agriculture committee. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm actually working with a group called the Hilltown Understory Initiative based out of the CDC in Chesterfield. Uh, and um, yeah, that's uh, working with the agriculture department of the town. So um, sort of involved in that way. You know? cool. Uh, cool. Awesome. And in, in our annual town meeting, Saturday, June 5th at the grammar school at one o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> Great. <laughs> I'll see you then. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Next All right. year, right? Thank you. <laughs> yeah. No, okay. it's not on Zoom. Not on Zoom. Yeah. See our, our, our next issue is uh, items not anticipated in 48 hours. Ross, did you have any? No. I don't. Great. So then we have an administrator update. Jeez. That I do have. Following up from our meeting a couple of meetings ago, the town clerk has ordered the electronic voting clickers that the board approved. They should be in this week, and we'll start training on those shortly. Um, I met with Renique last week in her role as the Board, of, the Board of Health and went over our precautions for town meeting to make sure that we're meeting the right distancing for COVID. And her, our plans seem to be in sync with what she had in mind, so I think we're in good straight there. Speaking of the town meeting, um, the seating plan looks like we're gonna use the gym It'll hold about 120 people seating in pairs, six feet apart with the right distancing. And any overflow will be in the big hallway going up from the lobby towards the art room. And we think we can get another 60 people in there. Um, I talked to Chris at FCAT and we're gonna meet down there in the next week or so to go over just what we have to do for audio and wireless mics to make sure everybody can hear and talk during the meeting. I had a conversation with uh, FinCom Chair Alan Singer, and I think we're gonna try to get a meeting with the FinCom Chair and the Capital Committee Chair, I guess that's Bob, to go over what might we might wanna say as sort of a state of the town or a financial summary as part of town meeting. Um, we mentioned tonight about having you sign a couple documents. Um, are any of you interested in us using your electronic signature? I'm totally Louise fine with that. To, Louise has a way to do that. Um, we would check with you each time before we do that, but that would be an email that says, can we use a signature on the following document? I have an agreement. electronic signatures for the past year and it's saved <laughs> a lot of gas miles, it saved my life. You know, the, well, so it, it, it depends what, if, if it's the warrants, um, I. It, it, you know, at the school, like Frontier uses the Adobe sign software. So, so, so like the, the for, for the warrants, so the stack of warrants and all the original receipts behind the warrants, all are digital digitized and all flow with what they're asking for you to sign. Yeah. There's so, like a paper trail. So, so if it's that level of specificity where the bills that go with the warrant item number are all presented digitally, then I'm okay signing digitally, but if if not, um, I, I I really like to see when I go I go through the warrant um, I go through the warrants, especially the spending items, and look at uh, what it is that we're spending because so sometimes I saw sometimes, what Mike sometimes that's the only and I, I think Mike produces the backup you know electronically that you're asking for, but the the signing of any one document is up to you individually. Yeah, if, you know, like tonight you voted on 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 a contract and, and a, the FERCOG thing and yep. a few other things. Oh, signing the, the poll hearing, we will send a note to you tomorrow saying, do you want to come in and sign this or do you can we use a signature? And it will be an individual basis. But if we get all three, I mean, we had some things that was you know sat around for for a couple of days last week. Mm -hmm. Not that, not that we don't want to see you in here, but um, <laughs> we will offer that as an option to you when we have things to sign. I yeah. just want to check yeah. and see if that concept yeah. is okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'll take that option. 
Yep. Okay. Um, I mentioned Veronique was in here um, last week. We're planning to have sort of informal sessions between now and her official start date of June 28th. Those will just be for her to come in and sort of ease into the transition process. I plan to discuss anything that I think is a change with her ahead of time just so that we're both on the same page and she doesn't end up reversing what we do here on in the interim. So I'm going to try to coordinate those type of changes with her. Um, I did I did talk to Michael, our accountant, and asked him to compare this year's revenue to date versus last year's revenue to date. Because I'm always, you know, you, you work very hard to manage your expenses, but it's based upon an estimated revenue that probably starts in November and December, maybe January. Uh, he said we're tracking reasonably well to last year. We're about 7% behind on collections. But he thinks that's because the, the second tax bill went out later due to, due to the COVID issues. Um, at this point, he doesn't see any major problems with cash flow, and he thinks that the town appropriately lowered its revenue projections last year and therefore its expense budget, and that we should be in the black this year based upon tracking year to date. So that's just sort of a brief recap on finances. Um, I had a discussion with Jan last week about um, bank account balances to be sure we have enough to pay big bills, and she said the town is in a good situation and we won't have to do any borrowing in advance of collections to pay these bills. So that is the end of my report for tonight. So, Ross, the only other thing I wanted to sort of talk about was the um, when, when you meet with Chris from FCAT, because I don't know if anybody really... Um, told you about just how bad the sound system was at last year's town meeting and not just bad but the um we were at a when, the sound system, when, when the sound system just gives out when every when only every other word of a sentence is audible and and depend and, and it glitch and and the glitches are unpredictable and randomized and and affect different parts of the floor at different times and and all this and um, and, and, and the delay when people are handed a microphone that doesn't work repeatedly and the delay that all that, 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 you know, walking all the way across the room over and over again and all these things that were happening last year were just really bad, bad from the point of view if you wanted anything at town meeting passed, because I felt on several occasions that the people that were in that were at that town meeting were so frustrated with that sound system that it but one of the reasons why several things did not pass by one vote was because there were some people there that were just like, this is such a bad experience. I'm voting no on everything I can. Um, okay. You know, well, thank you. Thank you for that warning. I will <laughs> talk to Chris about trying to perfect the system for this year. And what I happened last year, there, there was a very specific problem. They figured out after the meeting uh, that problem shouldn't happen again. Uh, they had two or three microphones all turned to the same channel, and they shouldn't have done that. And, we were all uh, in the barn. It it, was, yeah, uh, that was part of it. It was bad. Point. Yeah. And FCAT felt terrible. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you for the warning. We will look into that. How about select board uh, concerns? Uh, do, I, do I have to sit up at the table? Yeah. Next time. <laughs> yes, you do. You have to you have to pretend that you know us. <laughs> That's, I, Sorry, I Erica. The other day I was like, oh God, I have to guess. Okay. All right. I gotta, I think uh, we will do long tables so you can be separated. <laughs> like, I don't How know. Long? Yeah. Yeah. So, I got like a month and a half to prepare. So <laughs> well, we're doing great if that's your only concern, Erica. So yeah, that's pretty that's, much it. That's a pretty good one. And actually, uh, is there any mail? Yeah, and actually, we only have like uh, like three and a half weeks to prepare. Three weeks to prepare. Yeah. It's coming up. It is. Um, yeah, you're, well, yeah, you're, okay. So mm. the the only mail that I would mention is that is that we did get a letter from uh, Carol and Ness and the and the COVID folks that there's that there is a uh, final COVID vaccination clinic going on at the former Channing Beat. It's now called uh, Treehouse the, Brewing. This, uh, 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 yep. 
and uh, and 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 they have they if if you if you click on the link to look at the uh, the appointments, they, there are hundreds and hundreds of appointments at all good times of day. They have plenty of vaccine. Uh, they have about 700 shots available right now. And any, you know, I really encourage anyone that's not vaccinated, if you're at all inclined, it's a, it, you know, go right down and support our local uh, vaccination clinic. It's going to be a one-shot clinic. It's with the Johnson and Johnson. Maybe that'll dissuade you or encourage you. But uh, it's, 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 and it's, it's uh, the, the details of it are going to, or should be on our town website. So you know, on on the mask. Uh, the mass.gov uh, website now they're giving they're publishing the weekly vac vaccination rates of the town and the total vaccination rates of the town um, oh, and th they break it but down by age groups um, and the total number of adults that are eligible and etc cetera, etc cetera. and i was surprised to find out that deerfield is beating our vaccination rate by a few percentage points that, that to me was that's to me is personally disappointing I feel like if you bring that to people's attention, Phil, <laughs> like, like often and loud. Yeah, like we can't let Deerfield beat us in anything. Um, but uh, yeah, so so but 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 we were at sixty percent, and Deerfield's at seventy-two. Wow. Um, so yeah, we have we have ways to go, but our 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 seniors are like. 99 plus so yeah, yeah. i was gonna say we, yeah. maybe we can ask the board of health to work on that too but it, but it, but it's our 20 somethings our 20 somethings and 30 somethings are failing us so they got to get vaccinated well what if Everybody. you have 20 somethings who are registered to, to register to vote in conway but actually don't live in the state that's probably because i've got yeah. kids who don't live in massachusetts right now but they're technically registered to vote in conway that's true and they're getting vaccinated so yeah, that's true. They only go by the information they have. Interesting. Yeah. Maybe they could send their vaccination proof of vaccination in and get us yeah. classified. Whatever we can do to get those numbers up. That's right. That's right. Any other announcements? Not for me. So our next meeting is going to be on May twenty fourth, six o'clock by Zoom right here. Um, wait. Rock. Question for you: the um, pre meeting. AKA the meeting before town meeting is meeting the same night at seven o'clock. Yes, I saw that. Do you want to have the select board meeting earlier? Yes. I, yeah, I had that thought. Yeah. Or I thought we could have, it might be too complicated to have an in-person select board meeting at the school. Once before we had, yeah, we, we did that. We did that once, yeah, <laughs> since I've been on select board. Um, but no, I'm I'm fine with just meeting earlier so that we can be there for the seven o'clock meeting. Okay, so you want to meet at five o'clock? Yeah, that sounds safe. Five o'clock, one o'clock. Let me look at my calendar. Do that. Um, yeah, I could do one o'clock on the twenty fourth. I could do one o'clock also. You know, since it's the mosquito thing and you're accept you're expecting public. Oh, that's right. Yeah, maybe. Uh, thank you, Phil. You're right. Um, that might be harder for people like middle of the afternoon who don't have flexibility at work. We could meet at 530 and we could have the mosquito thing starting more like six o'clock. That could be tight. Yeah, um, that's going to be tight. What about like I've, I've five? Got in here also, so you to, I've also got in here for you to review the motions for the town meeting um, and any other town meeting prep. Um, 430. Five with a hard stop. I could, yeah, I could do four thirty. I mean, I just I'd like Phil said I don't want to exclude people who might really want to attend the mosquito hearing. If we can call it a hearing, the mosquito conversation. Four thirty. Four thirty. Four thirty. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's good for me. 
Hey, Ross, could you notify the, the people that were on the meeting, like Mary McClintock? Do you, do you have their email addresses? I could notify them. Had... Priscilla. Devlin. Devlin. Uh, and the guys from the open, huh? open something farm, open view farm. Open view farm. Try to find okay, we will, we will try to get a hold of them. Great. Okay, 4.30. We'll see you all at 4.30 two weeks from now. Very good. Sounds good. Thank Very you. Good. Thank you all. I think do we have to vote to adjourn the meeting. Well, I'll make a motion <laughs> to adjourn the meeting. Thank you, Eric. Yeah. Yeah. I'll second that. I'll second. I think we're for rules, I? I'm just trying to. That's fine. <laughs> Thank you, Ross. <laughs> Thank you. Good night, everybody. Good night. Bye. Bye.